get ready to rumble. All right. Because here he is, Mr. Entertainment. Live from RVA, packing the truth and nothing but the truth. It's Preston Brown. Preston Brown. It's time to get down with Preston Brown. 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 Hey, welcome to the Famous Brown TV show. I'm your host, I'm Preston Brown. Got a great show for you tonight. Got a very interesting show and informative. And we're talking about a little black history here tonight. But before I start the show, I want to tell you about my fantastic book. This book is only 56 pages and it's a great read. It won't take you long to read it. You're going to enjoy the book. And when you get finished reading this book, you're going to say, hmm, I could have did that. I could have did that. It ain't that hard to do when you think outside the box. And by buying this book, you can purchase it right on Amazon. And soon you'll be able to purchase it at our brand new restaurant where we get ready to open up. Famous Brown Legendary Soul Food Restaurant on Nine Mile Road. We'll be opening soon. And we'll have copies of the book. And you can come right by the, the restaurant and pick up your copy. Or you can order it right on Amazon. And uh, the book is only $10 best $10 you can spend. Why well, spend $40,000 going to school, the universities, and getting a degree when this little book will teach you how to think outside the box. Okay, this show would not be here if I didn't talk about my sponsor. Let's talk about Easy Car Rental, 3101 West Broad. Now, if your car is broke down and you need a car for a day, or two, or maybe a week, or even a month, Max Bell at Easy Car Rental can take care of you and when you go by say look I saw you on Famous Brown TV show and he talks about your rental cars so go by and see Max Bell nice car there ain't no hoop this he give you a nice rental car it won't cost you a whole lot of money and you don't need a great big deposit or, or credit card go see Max Max gonna take good care of you. Been in the same location. I guess he's been there maybe 10 years or more. So you know he's doing a good job if he's still there. Alright, let's talk about clothes. If you like nice hats, suits, shoes, shirts, ties, even the bow ties. Everybody's wearing bow ties now. Go by DNW Fashions. Now they're located inside. The Jeff Davis flea market and you know the whole lot of people in the flea market selling stuff but there's only one person selling the clothes like DNW fashion I call it clothes for grown men you know if you like the suits in the latest style leisure suits sweaters shirts tie go see my man Wayne Mason DNW fashion now when you walk into the flea market Go all the way to the back, and when you get to the end, take a left, and you go down a couple stalls, and you'll see DNW Fashion, and be sure you tell them you saw it and heard about it right here on the Famous Brand TV show, and he's going to appreciate it. I'm going to appreciate it because he'll keep on sponsoring this show. Okay, and also, now if you're in church here, near Creighton Court, come on, come a little closer. If you want some good barbecue, some good ribs. Go by Inner City Blues, home of North Carolina barbecue, and tell them when you get there, say, hey, I heard about you on that famous brand TV show. Let me try some of that barbecue. Let me try some of them real. Let me get a taste of those smoked chicken wings that he talks about on TV. They'll take good care of you. And let them know, hey, you heard it right here, famous brand TV show. Now, if you need a car, Credit ain't all it need to be. You got a down payment. Go and see my main man, John Jones, at Select Auto. They're located at 3203 Hall Street. And he's going to take good care of you. But you got to tell him, say, hey, I heard about you on the Famous Brown TV show. And uh, he's going to take good care of you. Get you in that car that you want. If he don't have it on the lot, tell him what you want. He'll go get it for you. Tell him I told you so. All right, before I get into the show, I'm going to take a quick break. 
show a couple of my commercials, my sponsors I just talked about. I'm coming right back, and I'm going to tell you who I got for my first guest tonight, my special guest tonight. Be right back. If you need to rent a car today, consider Easy Car Rental, 3101 West Broad. Let Car Rental Superstar C.L. Bell get you in a small, medium, or large car. Call 804-358-3406. Easy Car Rental, $29.95 a day, unlimited mileage, no credit card needed, and they'll pick you up virtually anywhere in the Richmond area, free. Easy Car Rental, 3101 West Broad, 804-358-3406. Talk to C.L. Bell. D&W Fashions, inside the Jeff Davis Highway Flea Market. D&W Fashions has the latest styles for winter coats, sweaters, suits, hat, shoes, and a large selection of shirt and tie sets, bow ties, mock shirts, and accessories that make you look sharp. Open Thursday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., Sunday, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. If you don't see it in the store, let them order it from their catalog. No extra charge. Let Wayne Mason help you dress to impress. Call him right now, 804-337-8869. D&W fashions okay we're gonna get this show hopping now look this week i had the opportunity to meet one of the unknown community activists civil rights activists that didn't get a lot of press picture won't all over the newspaper won't all over tv but this lady when she was young teenager she had the opportunity to march at Selma. And also, while she was young, she got the opportunity to meet Martin Luther King and all the great leaders of that day and time. Now, a lot of folks did stuff during the Civil Rights Movement that you never even heard about or you didn't know about. You know, there were certain people that stayed in the news and that, but there was a whole lot of people behind the scenes that helped make the civil rights movement grow, go, and become the knockdown of segregation, the knockdown of Jim Crow, and made a lot of opportunities for a lot of black folks like me, a lot of black folks like you, but we never knew it. I didn't know who she was until she just happened to be coming through Richmond and they had a layover. She was on her way to California, and the plane stayed overnight. So some people knew her and called me and said, look, you got to, you got to talk to Miss Betty. But right now, let me introduce you to Miss Betty. The interview we did um, while she was in Richmond for a few hours, and then I'll be right back. This is the Famous Brown TV show. I'm Preston Brown, and when I come back, I'm going to tell you about my brand new restaurant is going to be opening up in April. Be right back. Hey everybody, you're watching the Famous Brown TV show. I got a special guest, and it's strange how it happened. Her plane got delayed. She's on her way to California. Her plane got delayed. She stayed here overnight. Some people called me and said, you got to talk to Miss Betty. You got to talk to Miss Betty. I said, well, who is Miss Betty? Who is Miss Betty? Miss Betty is a young lady from Selma, Alabama, by the way of Los Angeles, California, but have been fighting in the civil rights struggle ever since the 1960s and still fighting. Betty Mae Fikes is a trailblazer. As a kid, she was at the epicenter of the civil rights struggle in Selma, Alabama. There were a lot of people just at March and was completely kicked out of their homes. So a lot of things that we take so for granted today Someone had to die for back then. This is Black History Month. Fikes addressed students today at Northport Elementary School in Brooklyn Center. We're still in a, a fight. Mixing in music with her message. Most of our younger generation now don't even have a clue about their history. Fikes and countless others jump-started the civil rights movement in the 1960s building a foundation for change that benefited African Americans. Today, however... And I'm crying more than I ever cried before. I have a history. Fikes believes there are cracks in that foundation. What will your story be? When the uh, foundation is laid, you're supposed to be able to build. 
We're not building. Fikes experienced police harassment in Selma and knows it still happens in 2016. She says a few rogue cops bring down the entire police force. See, these bad cops have made it very bad for people to trust the good cops. There are a bunch of good cops that represent uh, different states and cities. Fikes also follows the Black Lives Matter movement. I'm on board with uh, Black Lives Matter. And sympathizes with their cause. People are just getting fed up. And they don't know any other way to speak out other than this. For Fikes, her visit to Northport is just another step in a remarkable journey. Yes, I was one of the young girls that marched from Selma. Well, when it started in Selma, the okay. first march is thing that historic today. That's where the police brutality took place and the beatings took place. The second march, later on, was a safe march where they marched all the way from Selma to Montgomery with Martin Luther King and then all of a sudden after Viola Lusa was killed, mm -hmm. people from all over the country mm -hmm. came to march. Mm -hmm. So it's very historic now. Well, how do you, well not how, but what do you think about the attitude of black people during that stage? and the black people attitude that you meet now as far as civil rights? Well, the attitude that I take back then was that I tell them it felt like the ones who are believers that it was seemed like the day when Moses led the people out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. There was such united, you know, unity among the people. Right. The old grandmother singing a song of, you know, we shall overcome and, mm -hmm. and you know, that song was taken from an old spiritual. But the unity of the people back then, and it was saying something inside of me keeps telling me to go ahead. And what I see the difference today is that the spirituality is gone today. We fought for education, but education now is uh, by itself is really no good. Uh, spiritually, they say what they would always say, the Trinity the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Today we say mind, body, and spirit. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have some spirituality about you, whatever organization you're in, it happens, but when there's no music, when there's no substance, it's not lasting. So I didn't join the movement, the movement captured me. I finally found my place. I could do something. And it wasn't so much about singing. You know, when you're able to help someone else, you're really helping yourself more. So in the movement, going out in the rural areas of places where I grew up and didn't know anything about it, because I thought everything was all right in Selma. But when the movement and the people came, we had as the Kuwaitis would say, those freedom riders, they called everybody freedom riders. And when they came to the county of Selma, Dallas County, we didn't really have hotels, so they stayed in homes. We had black hotels, but they were so overcrowded at the time, and then freedom people didn't have no money. So the community opened up doors for them to stay. One of the people that you performed with was the legendary James Brown. Tell me about that. Well, that was a thing. I was singing with a group in my hometown by the name of the Micronites. And this particular Saturday night, James Brown was touring the South. And he was in Montgomery, Alabama. And his record, uh, I think, promoter came to Selma, which his mother lived in Selma. Wizard Hunt was his name. And they came to the Elks Club where I was performing and they oh, okay. said, we want to take you to, so James Brown can hear you. So I couldn't go right away because I had to get permission from my grandmother okay. and my, the ones that had raised me. So they said no. Mm -hmm. Then they sent some more people from James Crew to let them know that they would take care of me. So the only way I could go was a fellow by the name of Charles William and Mook was my overseers. Okay. So they carried me so James Brown could hear me. And I finished the Southern tour with James Brown. Oh, okay. And I came home for them to, my 
parents to sign the contract. And my old grandmother, who died at the age of one birthday, said she was 113, the other one was 117. Oh, good. She said, that gal is not going to be out there singing those reels. <laughs> <laughs> so she said no. And finally, James Brown, we didn't have a telephone at the time, so James Brown contacted me at, uh, by calling Good Samaritan Hospital. Mm -hmm. And one of the orderlies from the hospital came down and said, you have a phone call from James Brown. So in less than 10 minutes, that had went all over town. Mm -hmm. So I went and received a phone call and I talked to him, and I told him my grandmother had said no. Mm -hmm. And after then, he sent uh, this fellow to uh, my home and to talk to my grandmother, and she said, no, mm -hmm. that night there's poison, that girl don't need to be out there, that night they singing those reels. They wanted me to be another <laughs> Mahalia Jackson. Okay, well, keep so that the, gospel. Yes. Yeah. So the little time that I was out there, I truly enjoyed it, and he was much different then than the one he's portrayed in the 80s. civil rights? Well, nobody really knows the true story because we got all the dignitaries that came along afterwards that mm -hmm. taken over the glory. Mm -hmm. But it was the children of Selma okay. that started the movement in Selma. Okay. And we had men like uh, Silas Norman and uh, another one by the name of John Love that had came from uh, New York. Mm -hmm that he had organized us. But at that time, our teachers, our parents, we didn't even know that our parents didn't have the right to vote. Oh, okay. So uh, my thing was just to have something to do. When Bernard Lafayette came and his car had broke down and asked the question, Did you, do you all know whether or not your parents got the right to vote? And uh, it was Charles Bonner and Cleophus Hobbs, and they talked. So what happened, he gave pamphlets to us to pass out. Charles had bought me pamphlets. So we went through the community passing out pamphlets, mm -hmm. letting people know about a mass meeting, which we knew had no clue what was going on. Mm -hmm. And this happened, and this is how the kids got involved. After the mass meeting started, we wanted to know no blacks, adults, were getting involved. Yeah. Now, by us being uh, children, we didn't understand that, so we began to think that our teachers and adults were cowards. So it was the children okay. of Selma that started the movement. And when SC and LC and all of them came in, and a group there in Selma by the name of Courageous Eight, they had been working undercover for years, but nobody really knew, knew about them. Okay. So until the mass meetings and things like that started. But what about the movie? Do, do the movie tell? No. What? No, it's not the real. And, and not, if anyone have seen the movie... Mm -hmm. uh, I saw it. So when, you, when you see the critics, it also says that this is not a documentary. Okay. So they just put this movie together and the people It'll of the movement, yeah, the people of the movement are very upset about that. I haven't seen it because mm -hmm. I was not afraid to see it, but so many, my mm -hmm. phone rang off the hook for over a month, mm -hmm. this movie, and everyone say it's a good movie. I, I, I don't take anything away from it, mm -hmm. but 
I don't think you should have done anything like that when we're talking about the history of the our true people. True history. Yes. But uh, right now we're we're taping doing Black History Month. Mm -hmm. Now tell everybody what are you doing now? Well, I'm traveling across the country, still telling the story of the old songs because I constantly keep saying that every nationality that comes to this country bring their heritage and their culture with them. And they pass it on from generation to generation. We're the only culture of people that give ours away. Ain't that lady something else? Yes, indeed. But let me take a moment and not only tell you about this great book, Think It Outside the Box. If I did it, so can you. But let me talk about our brand new restaurant that we'll get ready to open up. It's family owned. So when I say we, I talk about my family. But it's going to be located at 5156 Nine Mile Road. It's in the Fairfield Shoppers World, uh, right below the new Walmart, and across from Fairfield Middle School. We're going to be opening up sometime in April. And if you've been wanting to eat some pig feet, some chitlins, this is the place to come. And if you used to come to the famous Brown Soul Food Restaurant at Fairfield Commons Mall, hey, I'm back. Now, we ain't going to have a whole lot of dancing and clubbing because the place is not that big. But the food is there. The food will be good, and it's not going to be real expensive. So come on down. I'm open up sometime in April. Come on, check out Famous Brown. It ain't no place in town like Famous Brown. We'll be back. But we have a true icon. Now, you might read stuff in the books and see stuff on TV. Here's a lady that actually lived it, walked it, and can tell you the truth. And I try to keep truth alive. I try to keep truth alive because we have so many books out. Mm -hmm. And most of the books that have been out mm -hmm. are books that have been researched. We don't have too many people that laid the foundation. Mm -hmm. And when you've given this history out of our history, mm -hmm. we already have been misplaced for over 500 years. We've been fighting among ourselves for over 500 years. Now is the time for truth. And the truth is the only way. We're just about out of time. I hope that you enjoy the show tonight and uh, the conversation I had with Miss Betty. You know, a lot of folks did things in the doing segregation and never got credit for it. Most of them didn't want credit for it. They just wanted to make it better for their grandkids, better for you, and better for me. And they did. A lot of people had to suffer. You know, I had my pitfalls. Even though I went back there fighting in the 50s and 60s, I had my share of discrimination when I was growing up. And I still face racism sometime now. Not like it used to be, but it's still there. Folks don't like to talk about it until something happened. Then everybody want to talk about it. But I've been talking about it. And the bad part about it is not only we as black people have to deal with racism, but sometimes we have to deal with racism from our own people. Nobody like to talk about it, but there's two black Richmonds here. You know, if you're in a clique, you're in, you're in one segment. If you're not in a clique, you're in another segment. And Richmond have never been real supportive of that black community. And when I say that, I ain't trying to hurt nobody's feeling. But I just straight up, and I be honest. So many opportunities to be cut off or not allowed for up and coming blacks when blacks were in charge. Now you think about it. You don't have to believe what I say. Look at the situation. What have a lot of our leaders actually done for us? They made us go backwards instead of forward. And the reason I say that is if you around my age or a little older, you experience black entrepreneurship in Richmond because it was so many blacks that had businesses. It was so many blacks that were doing great things in this city. 
Then you get a black leadership and slowly but surely blacks going out of business. You have blacks controlling the city of Richmond and black contractors couldn't get work to build city buildings. Now what did that say to you? Something is not right when you have black people making decisions and the decisions don't help your community. I'm not a racist, but I'm just saying that if you are in control, you should always find a way to give back to your community. Now, people like me and other people who try to make a difference in your community, our problem is really not a problem, but our issue is they won't allow us to get in position of power to do something. They keep the same Negroes who won't stand up and speak, who won't stand up and fight in the position of power. And that's our downfall. We need a real black person in some of those seats. Not somebody who just sit there and go along to get along and don't want to offend nobody. We need to stand up and fight. If we had stood up and fought and raised hell, we wouldn't be crying for minimum wage increase. We wouldn't be crying to pass the Equal Rights Amendment and a lot of other stuff that's going on. Why we got to fight for something that our right to have? You think about it. I do what I can do. I say what I can say. And it might have been my downfall why I could never get elected is because one person told me I was too black. How can you be too black when you say you want better living conditions for everybody, not only black folk, but better living conditions? I want to look out for our senior citizens. I want to make sure people make enough money to pay them high light bills and them other bills that steady going up. Taxes and bills are going up, and wages still down. Let me stop talking. My name is Preston Brown. It's been a great show. Catch me next week, same time, same channel. This is the Famous Brown TV show, and I always say I'm the mouth of the South. I smell it, I'm going to tell it, and I tell it just like it is. And it hurts your feeling, it should hurt your feeling for you to sit back and let your community go down without a fight. Peace. See you next week. I ain't mad at you, and I hope you ain't mad at me. For the last 30 minutes, you've been entertained by the Famous Brown TV Show. Join us next weekend at these same times for the yeah, Famous Brown God. TV Show with your host, P.T. Brown.